In this class, we're going to take a look at how you determine whether a function is increasing or decreasing. So in the previous class, we were looking at a scenario where we had a curve and we wanted to consider in that class the tangent line to the curve. So we have something like this, or I think it was mainly actually parabolas we used, but this is a, like a cubic function. And we imagined a scenario where we had a tangent line, say we had a tangent line here. So remember, a tangent line is just a line that touches a curve at one point. Um, so we had a tangent line and we tried to figure out the equation of those tangent lines at some point of tangency. And what we realized was that we can figure out the gradient of that tangent line by differentiating the curve and then subbing in the x-coordinate of this point of tangency. So basically we established a link between gradient and derivative. And indeed we kind of define sort of informally the derivative to be a gradient function, which basically means as you sort of move around the curve, obviously the tangent lines would change, the gradient of the tangent lines would also change as you're moving around the curve. And we link together the fact that that gradient function just gives you the gradient at any of those tangent lines just by taking the derivative which we call the gradient function and then subbing in the point. So in this class, we're looking at whether a function is increasing or decreasing, which is just really talking about the y values of the function. When we're talking about a function, we're talking about its output values, we're talking therefore about the y values. Remember a function is an input-output machine. The input values are the x values and the, the vertical values on a graph, the y values are the output values. So if we want to know if a function is increasing or decreasing, we really are just asking the question, um, are the y values going up or are the y values going down? But to determine whether they're going up or going down, effectively we're really just talking about whether the slope of the graph is at a particular point going up or is it going down? So in this part of this um, you know, made up curve that I've just drawn here, over here on the, on the left hand side, we can see that each of the tangent lines, if I draw them on, are sloping up the way. So remember, up the way to the right means a positive gradient, whereas in here, if we put on some tangent lines, then these guys are sloping down the way, and then back over here, they're going back up the way. At this particular point here, the tangent line would be vertical, and at this point here, these are called stationary points, or critical points, and we'll be using that terminology in subsequent classes, the, the, um, the gradient goes to zero. But we're talking there in terms of gradient, but we could talk in terms of derivative, because derivative and gradient we now know to kind of be interchangeable terms. So basically, this part of the curve here, the m value, the gradient of each of those tangent lines is positive. They're all sloping up to the right. In this part of the curve here, the m values are negative, they've got a negative gradient. At this point here, the m value is zero. At this point, this other critical point, the m value is zero. Over here in this part of the curve where we're sloping up again, the y values are going up and the gradient is greater than zero, okay? Now, also though, we've said that the gradient and the derivative are kind of the same thing. So it must therefore be true that the derivative, let's just call it y prime, is also greater than zero here. And at this critical point, the derivative y prime has to be zero. And then again, at this critical point, y prime is zero. For these points in this part where the graph is sloping down, the derivative is negative. So the derivative is just matching the gradient. Or maybe it's better to say the gradient is matching the derivative. The two give you the same results. So when we come to look at these example questions here, these different functions, and we're trying to determine whether the function is increasing or decreasing at a particular point, or in the case of this one, on a whole range of values, then all that we're really doing is taking the derivative and then evaluating at the point which has effectively given us a gradient of the tangent line at that point. But we don't need to draw graphs for this. We can do this purely as an algebraic process <clears throat> just by trusting in the fact that when we take our derivative, we know that we're going to get the same result as we would for the gradient. And therefore, this is kind of the graphical representation of what's going on. But we don't need to see that graph to know what's going on. So the key takeaway from that explanation there 
is that if you're trying to find whether a function is increasing or decreasing, that really is effectively just a fancy way of saying, is the graph sloping up? Is it sloping down or is it zero? Is it like stationary at the, the turning points, which we call the critical points? And to establish that, we're gonna use the derivative. So taking this function here and uh, taking the derivative, so f prime of x, we can evaluate the derivative just using the, the power rule because this is a polynomial function. So 3x squared minus 4x plus 6, you're probably quite competent with um, derivatives by this point if you're taking this class. If not, then maybe go back and practice some of the, the key rules like the power rule, product rule, all the, all the key kind of fundamental derivative rules. So we wanted to evaluate whether this function is increasing or decreasing at the point x equals one. So it doesn't make any sense to talk about a function just increasing or decreasing. It has to be increasing or decreasing either at a point or on an interval. Um, in, this, in this case, we're dealing only with the point x equals one. So that would mean that if we could see a graph of this function, which would also be some kind of cubic function, if we looked at the point where x is one on that graph, we are just trying to determine is the graph sloping up at that point? Is it stationary or is it sloping down? Those are your only three choices. <clears throat> to determine that, we've taken our derivative and now we're just gonna sub in the point where x is one. So we're gonna do f dash one. Now, if we sub that in, we're gonna get three times one squared, which is three minus four times one, which is minus four. The six on the end stays as a six and that comes out to be uh, nine minus four is five. Now, we're not particularly interested in the number itself. What we're interested in is the fact that five is greater than zero. In other words, five is a positive number. So it would be like one of this, uh, well, one of these scenarios here where the gradient of the tangent line is sloping up at that point. In fact, the gradient of the tangent line would be five at that point, but we only care whether the function is increasing or decreasing at that point. If this has come out to be a positive number, then we can say that at x equals one, that function is increasing. In other words, the y values around the point x equals one are going up the way rather than down the way. Now, the cool thing about calculus and derivatives is that we're talking here about whether it's increasing or decreasing at a single point. But at a single point, it's not doing anything. It can't be increasing or decreasing. You can only define increasing if you've got two points, right? And a line kind of between them or movement between them or decreasing would be this way between two points. But this is the powerful thing about calculus. It allows you to evaluate these scenarios where you would think you would need to look at multiple points. It's the same with um, working out the sort of gradient here. Um, we can do that by derivative for a single point. It's kind of cool. Um, anyway. So moving on to the next one. So we want to determine whether this function is increasing, decreasing, or potentially stationary um, at the point where x equals minus two. Okay, so again, not really thinking too much in geometric terms here, even though we've got the geometric interpretation, we're just gonna go ahead, and this is how you would um, be expected to answer this question, by going ahead to take the derivative, so g prime of x, which is gonna be six minus four x cubed, subbing in the value of the point that you're interested in, so g prime of minus two, which is gonna be six minus, I'll just take my time with this one, so minus four times minus two cubed, okay? Let's maybe just write that in to be careful, so minus two cubed, so that's six minus four times, now minus two cubed, when you've got a negative number in your applying powers, remember that odd powers take it back to a negative, because that's gonna be minus two times minus two, which is positive four times minus two again, which takes you back into the negatives and it's negative eight. So that's gonna be six minus four times minus eight is plus, that's a double negative, 32. This comes out to be 48. We don't really care about that number. We just care about the fact that that number is positive. So at that particular point, that function is increasing the values of that function are going up. They're getting bigger at that point. Okay, so I hope that, that makes sense. It's not an easy concept. If you're not used to thinking about these kind of, kind of instantaneous, sometimes we call it an instantaneous rate of change, or you, you know, you're figuring out this information, which seems to require multiple points at a single point. 
So it is a little confusing potentially at first, but quite short questions these. They shouldn't really require a whole lot of working. Now, the third case is a little different. For this question, we want to determine whether the function is increasing or decreasing um, on a particular range of values. Now, we don't have the range of values. What we want to do is actually figure out the range of values. So for this one here, my made up graph, I know the function is increasing here and it's decreasing here and it's increasing again here, but I don't know exactly where those range of values are because I, I don't know what, I mean, I just made that graph up. In this question, we want to actually determine those range of values so we can say, oh yeah, the function is increasing for this part here and it's decreasing for these numbers here and then increasing like this. Now, to do this, we kind of have to jump ahead a little to something called stationary points, which you may not be familiar with um, yet. So I'm jumping this ahead because this type of question often comes in to this, um, this scenario of increase and decrease, but you need to kind of know about stationary points. So if you're not sure about those, um, they're also called critical points, then maybe check out the class on that kind of along with this one, just to be able to do this example. So these examples are fine, we don't need stationary points. This one's going a little further, but I'm just including it here for sort of completeness. We're kind of going to do a similar thing. We're going to take our derivative, so dy dx, and that comes out to be using the power rule 3x squared minus 6. Now, if you think about these points here where the derivative is 0, where the, the graph has got these turning points, these um, stationary points as they're called, or critical points, we know the derivative and the gradient at those points has to be 0, okay? So if we want to find those points, and they're really the key to knowing where the function is increasing and decreasing and increasing, like the range of values, because everything changes at those points. So that's the point where things change. Here the graph was going up, it stops, then it's going down, stops, going up. They're the points that provide like the dividing line. If we want to find those, we just set our derivative equal to zero. And I'll elaborate on that in the class where we talk about stationary points um, or critical points. So we need to basically solve this equation. We can do that by, well, if we start by dividing through by three, we're gonna get x squared um, minus two equals zero, and then x squared equals two, giving us x equals plus or minus root two. So remember to include the, the minus when you take a square root, because there should be two solutions to that equation, the plus and the minus. Now, what we basically do with these is we make a thing, or one option is to make a thing called a nature table. And a nature table is effectively just a little mini sketch of the graph. And what we do is we've um, got a row for the x values, we've got a row for the derivative, so dy dx, and then we've got a, a row for what we'll call either the, the shape of the graph or the slope of the graph. And bear with me, if you're not sure about this, and I'm jumping ahead a little, it's just because of this particular example type, um, you might need to check out a class on this to be a little more sure of what I'm doing here. Um, so the way this works, you put in your two stationary points. Now we know that at the stationary points, the derivative is zero. So we put a zero here in the column, uh, sorry, in the row for derivative, because at those points, the derivative is zero. That's exactly how we found those points. Then what we do is we examine some number in between these two numbers and a number to the left and a number to the right. That's basically because we want to determine the behavior around these points, like what is happening between them, what is happening to the left and the right of them. So a number smaller than minus root two would be something like uh, minus 10 would work. Um, I'm gonna put the number one in here and I'm gonna put the number 10 in here. You can use different numbers as long as they get into the correct range. So one is between these numbers, 10 is bigger than this number, but not past another stationary point. There are only two. Minus 10 is smaller than this number, but again, as long as it's not crossing over another stationary point, you'll be fine. We wanna test the derivative at each of these points. So let's test our derivative at minus 10. This is a derivative here. Minus 10 all squared is 100 times three is 300. So this is definitely gonna be positive at that particular point. If we put one in there, three times one squared is three, minus six is negative three, so that's negative. If we put 100 in there, we're gonna get the same result as this one here, so it's gonna be positive. So I know I'm going through that at speed, but basically just testing the derivative at each of these points, trying to determine whether the derivative 
is positive or negative. We don't care too much what the actual number was, just whether it's positive or negative, because what we're trying to determine is whether in each of these parts of the graph around the stationary points is the graph going up or down. That's all we care about. Here it's positive, so we know that the graph is going up. Here it's stationary, here it's negative, so the graph's going down. Here it's stationary, and then here it's positive again. So if we fill that in, I'm gonna use a red pen for this. If we fill that in, I've drawn like a, like a stick diagram here. Um, but basically that is a mini sketch of the curve. If we fill that in and make it a bit more curvy, something like that, that is what your curve would look like. And this is a cubic function. So it would carry on all the way down there and it would carry on up there. But this is the main, the main action for this curve is around uh, those stationary points. Now the question was to find the range of values on which the function is increasing and decreasing. So the function is increasing here all the way up to this first critical point, to the stationary point. So that is going to be basically on the interval minus infinity. So remember these are your x values kind of going this way. So all of the x values to the left of that point. So minus infinity all the way up to um, that point, which is minus root two. So on that interval, the function is increasing. On the interval from root two going further, it's also increasing. So that would be from root two up to positive infinity. And if we put those two sets together uh, by the union, then that basically these are all the ranges of values for which that function is increasing. In other words, the part where the graph is going up. The part where the graph is going down is between the two stationary points. So that is between minus root 2 and positive root 2. So in this part here, the function is increasing. In this part here, the function is decreasing. So if you're familiar with that set notation, notice I wrote these as open intervals. So um, basically, we're not including root 2, uh, minus root 2 or root 2 in the same here, because at those points, the function is not increasing or decreasing. It's stationary, it's zero, so they don't get included. If they were included, then we would use a closed interval with the, the square brackets. So it's a more complex version of this problem. These two were relatively straightforward. In fact, once you get competent with these, evaluating increasing or decreasing at a single point, you can do them very quickly. I mean, literally within like 20 seconds or 30 seconds, maybe even quicker than that. This one, a little bit more work and start to pull in some other techniques, which we're going to be looking at more specifically in other classes. But I just wanted to include that example just to take these a little further and to make it clear as well how this kind of idea of what we're working with here links back a little to the geometry. Um, and now, like I've said in previous classes, um, there's a strong link between derivative gradient and the kind of geometry, I guess, of uh, functions. So very important topic, this um, increasing and decreasing functions. It's got a whole bunch of applications in the real world. It's got a whole bunch of applications that we'll be looking at in other classes as well. So do spend some time making sure you understand this. Maybe watch this example again, because I know that I went through it pretty, pretty quickly there. So the key takeaway from this class really is that gradient and derivative can be considered kind of the same thing in some scenarios. There's some caveats to that. You've got to be a little careful with that. But in many, many, many cases, and certainly in what we're looking at here, you can consider gradient and derivative to be sort of interchangeable terms, and certainly in terms of trying to determine where the function is increasing or decreasing. So quite a lot of information. Hopefully that makes sense. If you need to rewatch this video, then go for that. If you understand it and you're all good, then check out a few practice questions.